Good evening. Welcome to the April 7, 2015 Planning and Zoning Meeting. If you could please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, then a moment of silence. If we could please have roll call from left to right. Anthony Sutton. Mike Dolan. John Grant. Jean Servine. Edward Mead. Carl S. Moore. Tom Nickel. Tom Panzella. Jim Quish. I am Ben Gettinger, also present are David Sulkis, city planner and Phyllis Liggett, board clerk. Um, before we start with the first item on the agenda, we are going to, after the first item on the agenda, we are going to do the big drive to accommodate some uh, members in the audience, so that will be second on the agenda. The first item on the agenda is 1556 New Haven Avenue, Zone R-7.5. Mr. Chair, I would like to make a, uh, a motion for approval of the settlement that was agreed upon. Uh, the board uh, made the settlement for the following reasons. The revised plans provide increased pedestrian and vehicular safety measures such as crosswalk, a raised sidewalk along the side of the existing structure, and a one-way exit and entrance. Second, the density of the project is reduced by one unit, or 12.5 percent. Third, parking will be more compliant with the regulations. Fourth, keeping the existing house in its current state as a single family will maintain the streetscape and visual fabric of the neighborhood. Five, revised application maintains an affordable component. The last, sprinklers in the proposed buildings provide an additional safety component. Having a motion, do we have a second? Mr. Grant seconds. Any discussion on the motion? Okay. All right, we, we will. There's no need to yell. We will uh, read those again. All right. Mr. Chair, why don't you read it? Your voice is louder. <laughs> so the settlement um, is approved for the following reasons. The revised plans provide increased pedestrian and vehicular safety measures such as crosswalk, a race sidewalk along the side of the existing structure, and a one-way exit and entrance. The density of the project is reduced by one unit or 12.5%. Parking will be more compliant with the regulations. Keeping the existing house in its current state as a single family will maintain the streetscape and visual fabric of the neighborhood. Revised application maintains an affordable component and sprinklers in the proposed buildings provide an additional safety component. So having a motion and a second, any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion? Anyone against? Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is 460 Bick Drive, Zone OD. Would anyone like to make a motion or discuss the application? Mr. Quish? Yes, yeah, so um, we did uh, receive uh, draft language for a motion that we had asked uh, staff to prepare. Um, we did just get it now. I'd like, uh, I'd like a chance to look at it and, 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 um, and add to it and, 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 and edit it. I don't know if where that, if we try to do that as part of this uh, tonight's meeting or if we do this individually and get um, get our individual positions back to Stafford incorporation into the draft into a, uh, a second draft motion is your request not to vote on this tonight that's correct
Anyone else have any further opinion? Mr. Me Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I believe that the five things that are listed on the uh, draft are what we brought up in the last meeting, and that's how, why this draft is uh, being presented to us tonight. Um, and I make a motion to deny this application as uh, presented. Having a motion, do we have a, a second? Um, we have a motion. We have a second, Ms. Servine. Mr. Quish, would you like to speak? Yes, I think that um, I think that it's ill-advised. I think that we know that this is going to go to court, and that the only pe the only thing that we're going to be able to stand on in court is the actual wording of the uh, of the motion. And if we saw an example of of uh, of a, a well-worded motion. We just heard it, and, and this motion is not that. It, it does not elaborate on the issues that we have in front of us. It doesn't incorporate many issues that I personally brought up. It doesn't incorporate issues that the public brought up. And I think that, that if we are serious about having this denial <coughs> stand up in court, that we should do um, a much better job of drafting the one piece that we're able to hang our hat on. It's the motion itself. And uh, I, I think that it's insufficient to, to do justice to all the work that was put in and time that people put into this. So. Well, we, we have a motion on the floor, and we have a motion um, for we have someone who seconded that motion. Any discussion on the motion? Um, I'm actually against the motion, but I, what I will say is if you're concerned about it holding up in court, then I don't necessarily disagree with Mr. Quish. If, if, what, if the important part is, is the motion and what it actually says, um, you know, it's up to you guys. Again, we have a motion in a second, and um, I'm against the motion. I'm actually for the application. so. Um, I'm probably not the right person to talk about whether or not to postpone it. Mr. Mute. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to Commissioner Quish. Uh, the motion that was read for the settlement on New Haven Avenue is a settlement that was drafted by the city attorney. That's why it was in the language that it is. Um, if we can have a settlement between us and uh, Garden Homes Management, then the city attorney is going to draft a settlement for us to, for a motion. Um, if we deny it, it's going to go to court, yes, um, unless they make it a, a motion or a settlement case with the city attorney, then we're going to go be the same way back as we just had for New Haven Avenue. Ms. Servine? I will also add uh, that if we wish to add anything more to this motion as it stands, we can do that right now as well. Mr. Sutton? Well, having a motion in a second um, before we take a vote, any discussion on the motion? Mr. Quish. So um, if, if we uh, deny this motion, it's not the same as an approval of the petition, so that if the motion is denied, we could then, or I could move to uh, offline build a better motion and bring it up at the next meeting. Is that correct? Mr. Sulkis? The way the motion was made, it was to either approve or deny this motion. And if, if, to, if Mr. Quish is saying it was to deny the motion, we'd have to go back. Phyllis, what was the actual motion? If it was to approve is to deny the motion. Well, if you're going to uh, take a vote to deny the motion, that would not be an automatic approval. It was a motion to deny the application. Mm -hmm. Oh, a motion to deny the application would mean that you'd be voting uh, in favor of uh, the, the written motion that's in front of you. 
having a motion to deny the application and having a second. Any further discussion on the motion? Um, Mr. Mead, you could read the motion. I move to deny the petition of Garden Home Management for special permit and site plan review approval at 460 Bick Drive to construct a 257-unit residential development under CGS 8-30G on map 41, block 301, parcel 2A, for the following reasons. One, the water pressure to the area is low and the water usage on the proposed building for the both domestic and fire protection is reliant on art on an artificial system to increase water pressure to an adequate level to function. Two, the site has limited access with its one driveway entrance and restricted directional turning. Three, the lack of a second means of access for emergency vehicles to enter the site. Four, the increase in traffic at the intersection of Bick Drive and Nautic Avenue. And five, the explosive base blasting required to prepare the site would endanger the Iroquois National Gas Pipeline that crosses the site. Um, having a motion and a second, again, any discussion on the motion, Mr. Quish? Yes, and um, I'd like to add language to include uh, um, the uh, traffic impacts at the Post Road at Naugatuck and Schoolhouse Road, Vic Drive, and Plains Road, as additionally added to the uh, stress that the added uh, traffic is it can have impact in those locations as well. Um, I'd like to uh, add the term uh, that because of the entrance restrictions, there is um, a health and safety risk. I would say add also that the, um, the, the parking, as was discussed in, many, in, in the various meetings, is uh, inadequate and potentially dangerous in a situation where there was, you know, snow like we've had this year, um, and emergency vehicle access, and potential, uh, you know, maintenance on the Iroquois pipeline could take up space. And as as this was, if this was fully built and something like that happened, as we discussed, there would be uh, there would be some safety issues with the uh, with the parking as. Um, as proposed, um, and I would also add that uh, you know the, the the stress level in the neighborhood is a health issue, and that's common knowledge that stress is un an unhealthy situation, and I'd like to add that in to the language of the motion as well. Having a motion to amend the original motion, is, do we have a second? Having a motion and a second, any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all in favor of the amendment? Anyone against the amendment? The amendment stands now having an amended motion and an amended second. Any discussion on the amended motion? Um, I will simply say that, um, you know, having been on this board for a while, I know what's going to happen at the court level and um, whether or not you like 830G. Um, this application, in my opinion, satisfies the statutory requirements, so I'll be voting against the motion. All in favor of the motion? Anyone against the motion? Two against. Two against. The motion passes and the application is denied. If you are leaving, could you please just leave uh, quietly? You're obviously welcome to stay for the next part of the agenda, um, but if you're going to leave, uh, We'll take a two-minute break so people could exit. Thank you. We're going to go back on the record. The next item on the agenda is 14 Gulf Street Zone SFA-10, public hearing closed by 5-11-2015, expires on 7-15-2015. Thank you. All right.
Huh? No, it's all right. I want them to see you. <coughs> we all set, Phyllis? Yep. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Thomas Lynch. I'm an attorney here in Milford with offices located at 63 Cherry Street. And I'm here tonight uh, with my clients, Angelo Lisi and Greg Field, uh, the managing members of 296 LLC. Uh, Angelo and Greg have uh, been home builders here in Milford for over 30 years. And they are the owners of the property located at 14 Gulf Street uh, with this application before you tonight for the construction of 15 units of residential multifamily dwellings on the property uh, in accordance with Section 830G of our statutes. <clears throat> with me here tonight, I also have uh, Ron Wasmer from Connecticut Civil Group, who's the site engineer who has put these plans together. Uh, I also have with me uh, uh, Lee Cook, who uh, is a former fire marshal of the city of Milford, who is going to give some testimony as to the safety aspects of the project, and uh, <clears throat> also David Spear from Windsor, who is here tonight to uh, uh, give a traffic analysis. So before you on the placard, and you did get your plans before uh, tonight's meeting, <clears throat> uh, basically the layout is to allow the demolition of the existing single family um, residence that has been located at the property, constructed basically in uh, 1900. Uh, it's in a very dilapidated state as anybody driving by the property has seen. And uh, <clears throat> the development is going to entail the construction of five buildings on the property, each building containing three uh, one bedroom uh, townhouse style apartments. Now, uh, the main thrust of what I'm going to be talking about tonight is really the location of the property because of its uh, locus to the uh, downtown area. Uh, basically, this is one project that uh, uh, we're going to look at in terms of <clears throat> it complying with the comprehensive uh, uh, plan of development for infill residential development downtown within walking distance of the train station, and also the location. Uh, the cover page on your plans <clears throat> has a zoning locus showing, I think Ronnie has it on the, the front, front page of the plans shows the location of the property in its uh, proximity to other zones in the area. <clears throat> and there's a real hodgepodge of zones uh, within close proximity here. The property is located in the SFA 10 zone, which, as we all know, is uh, a rather dense zone, allowing for uh, attached single-family uh, dwellings on small lots. Uh, as David had noted in his staff memo to you that was distributed prior to tonight, the property is also surrounded on two sides by the CDD 1 zone. And we all know from the uh, uh, modification back in 2002 of the zoning regulations, the CDD1 zone basically is <clears throat> the primary entryway into downtown Milford. And in that zone, there are numerous multifamily developments. The Smith Craft property at 158 Cherry Street that was developed, uh, the former Romano Bakery property at the corner of uh, uh, Sunnyside Court and Cherry Street. And across from <clears throat> the site, uh, moving basically down Cherry Street, is the RO zone, which has numerous uh, mixed-use uh, developments. Uh, the project where my office is located, Harmony Place, has some 26 residential units as well as uh, office units. So this particular application is a little bit different than our normal presentation to you under 830G because we're normally making the argument that the, z that the zoning regulations are really irrelevant. And in this application, I'm saying to you that they are relevant because the location of the property uh, adjacent to the CDD1 zone, uh, that particular zone permits an 830G application as a permitted use. Actually, when we <clears throat> first sat with David to go through the plans, we were going to go that route to apply for a zone change to bring the zone line over from Cherry Street. but. Uh, the requirement is for 40,000 square feet of 
uh, property for that to occur. We only have some 32,000 square feet here on site. So that's really the main thrust of what we want to give to you tonight. At the outset, I'm going to turn things over to Ron, and he's going to go through the uh, specifics of the uh, site plan. But uh, uh, really, this is in conformity both with adjacent zones and also our comprehensive plan of development for downtown. The whole thrust of <clears throat> having multifamily development downtown is to allow for uh, uh, utilization of the train station for walking and also for the uh, uh, utilization of these residents and others to support the shops and the restaurants downtown. So at this time, I just want to turn things over to Ron. He's going to go through the site plan, and then uh, David will talk about the impact of the traffic on this area. Evening for the record, Ronald Wasmer, professional engineer and land surveyor with an office at 158 Research Drive, Milford, Connecticut. I'm going to speak briefly about the uh, location of the site. Um, we're bounded westerly by Gulf Street, northerly by the rear of some office buildings that are on front on Cherry Street. This is uh, the bank, it might be Liberty Bank, I forgot which one. This is a medical office building. The, the parcel to the east, uh, this is the ShopRite building. This is the loading area for ShopRite. And then we're bounded on the south by a single family residence. Uh, a review of the building layout, there's five proposed buildings. You can see those on this landscaping plan highlighted in, in gray. With the, each building is comprised of three single, uh, one bedroom apartment units. Each apartment has a parking space in a garage inside the unit, a parking space in front of the unit, and then we have an additional 15 visitor overflow parking spaces along the um, uh, southerly portion of the property. We're proposing a sidewalk. Right now there is no sidewalk in front of the property. The sidewalk ends just about the corner of the bank property. We're going to extend the sidewalk, the, the limit of our property. Uh, one question that comes up quite a bit these days is uh, snow shelves, placement of snow. We do have a large uh, buffer area that will be landscaped with some shade trees uh, that would hold quite a bit of snow here as well as areas to the rear of the parking lot. Touch base on the landscaping plan. Again, the buildings are highlighted in gray and the remainder of the property is highlighted in green and the parking lot is, is white. Um, so along the, the rear of the buildings, or, or the rear of the proposed buildings, we have a evergreen screening between our parcel and the, the bank and the medical office. Along the easterly line, there's a significant amount of mature trees between us and the shop right. The majority of those trees are gonna remain and on the southerly side, we again have um, a few existing mature trees and we're gonna add in a couple shade trees. We also have some flowering shrubs around the front of each unit, and as well as some screening around the transformer pads. I'm going to uh, briefly walk through the site engineering. I know that's not everybody's favorite topic. Uh, in regards to site grading, the site is uh, 
the existing site is flat and there's minimal grading required to construct the buildings. In regards to utilities, the proposed building will be served by public sewer, uh, public water, gas, electric. Um, I want to make a note that the, the application meets the requirement for the sewer commission. And, uh, if, if any of you have seen um, multifamily applications in the past, you know that the sewer commission's density is actually somewhat more restrictive than zoning density. We have a proposed fire hydrant on the front of the site. There is a water main in the street, but we're adding a, hy a hydrant. Runoff from the roof and parking is directed towards an underground galley drainage system. Also included with the plans are a demolition plan for the existing building. There, right now there's a, two existing garages and a single family house. Sedimentation and erosion control plan. Again, there's minimal grading, so we don't anticipate any problems with erosion control. A lighting plan, which meets the requirements of your section and zoning regulations for lighting. We'll have three pole lights, um, a 14 foot pole with the, the head, the top of the head being 16 feet. Uh, the three lights are in the uh, landscaped areas between the building and it provides a nice lighting in the parking lot without having any light trespass on the neighboring properties. Uh, there's several details such as dumpster enclosures, signs, um, parking pavement, pavement curbing, uh, an existing condition plan is included, shows all the what's on the site right now. A site light plan, we do have a traffic, a site line plan, we do have a traffic engineer here and he'll discuss more with the with that and a modified subdivision lot line adjustment plan. Um, I'll touch base briefly on the uh, building architecture. That's fine. These buildings were designed by Milton Gru, architect. Um, this is the front elevation view. You can see the garage and front door, the second floor um, windows and the third floor. A side view. Uh, one thing I want to note is along the rear and the street, Gulf, Street's, uh, Gulf Street side of the first floor, the building has a stone veneer. So if you see the building from Cherry Street, there will be some landscape screening. You, you know, you look beyond the bank, beyond their parking lot, you'll see some landscape screening and then you'll see the stone veneer on this building that shows up a little bit more on the uh, rear elevations. So this, this uh, garage entrance level would have a stone veneer. You've seen a couple buildings recently constructed in town with that type of architectural feature. Uh, the, the remainder of the building plans are the floor plans. Uh, again, the first floor, the lowest floor is a garage level and an entrance area. This second floor is a dining room, living room, and a kitchen area. And the third floor is a, a bedroom area. Uh, also with us tonight is David Spears, a traffic engineer and Lee Cook, and at this point, I will um, turn the microphone over to David. For the record, my name is David Spear. I'm the principal engineer with DLS Traffic. My office is in Windsor, is in Windsor Connecticut and uh, I've been practicing traffic and civil engineering for over 30 years. We were asked to look at the traffic aspects of this application. 
I'd just like to briefly go through a summary of our traffic study that we prepared in conjunction with this application. This application is for 15 townhouse units. Um, our scope of study included a site visit. We did counts at Cherry Street and Gulf Street. We uh, prepared a volume development with trip generation, trip distribution, background and combined traffic. We did capacity and queuing analyses, and that's the uh, scope of our study. Cherry Street had background traffic reported by the Department of Transportation um, counted in 2012 of 12,200 vehicles per day uh, located southwest of Sunnyside Court. Their AM peak hour traffic was around 800 vehicles and the PM peak hour was about 1,100. Gulf Street, north of Route 162, showed a 2012 daily traffic of 1,100 with uh, 700 in the morning and 800 in the afternoon. At the site, uh, we did our own traffic counts in 2015 and we found uh, 850 trips during the morning peak hour and 1,000 during the afternoon peak hour. We reviewed the existing accident data on Gulf Street in the vicinity of our site drive um, and that was obtained from the DOT for the most recent three-year period. And there were only three accidents reported. One was a turning accident, one was a rear-end accident, one was a pedestrian accident. We typically get the accident data to review it to see if there's any existing accident trends that are related to the geometry or the uh, operations in the area. In this case, there's no trend evident from the accident data. So there's no, no trend that would be uh, impacted by the proposed development. The proposed conditions included uh, estimate of the trip generation. We estimated for the 15 townhouse units using Institute of Transportation Engineers trip generation data, the AM peak hour would be 11 trips with two entering and nine exiting and the PM peak hour traffic would be 13 trips with nine entering and four exiting. The capacity analysis was done for, for the Cherry Street, Gulf Street intersection and the Gulf Street site drive intersection. The intersection of Gulf and Cherry Street is signalized and the analysis showed level of service C in the morning and level of service E in the afternoon. The level of service ranges from A to F with A being the best level of service and, and F being a poor level of service. There was no impact from the site traffic on the level of service. The, there, there was no significant change when we added the site traffic to the background numbers and reran the capacity analysis. We still get C in the morning and E in the afternoon. So there's no impact at Cherry and Gulf from the site traffic. The intersection of Gulf Street at the site drive showed level of service A for the left turn coming into the site and level of service B for the exiting traffic onto Gulf Street. Those, those were with combined conditions and those are good levels of service. Um, the, the last thing we looked at was the queuing from Cherry Street going southerly towards the site drive on Gulf Street. And we found that um, the queue does make it to the site drive and pass during the peak hours, but the signal periodically, there, there's a northbound advance for Gulf Street, and then there's a through movement for, for the north-south movements so that that queue dissipates, it, it'll come back to the site drive and then it'll, it'll clear out and allow traffic in and out of the site drive so that the uh, queue is gonna be a periodic movement in front of the site and it's really an impact of the Cherry Street signal traffic on the site, not vice versa. The site traffic doesn't impact Cherry Street, but the signalized traffic does uh, impact the site. Now what typically will happen is that 
you, you have courteous drivers in Milford, they will allow, if you're, if you're turning left into the site going southbound and you're stuck waiting for a red signal, typically somebody will leave a gap and allow people to turn into the site. And that's, that's a common courtesy that happens all across Connecticut, and I'm sure it happens in Milford. In conclusion, I'd just like to reiterate the uh, findings of our study. The access from the uh, site is excellent. It has local and regional access. The um, existing traffic operations in the area will be maintained after completion of the development. The accident history showed no trends in, in the accident statistics. The intersection site distance was good for the posted speed limit. The uh, site generated traffic is small and will have no impact on the uh, study intersections. Levels of service at the study intersections will remain at current levels after this development is complete. And during peak hours, queues from the adjacent signal will periodically dissipate to allow full access to the site drive. And that summarizes our traffic study. I'll turn it over to Lee Cook. Good evening. For the record, Lee Cook, Project Review Consulting Services, uh, 48 Coherry Drive, Milford. I'm here tonight to um, give a report on the um, proposed development at 14 uh, Gulf Street. Um, I review the submitted plans titled Gulf Street 830G Affordable Housing Project, 14 Gulf Street, Milford, Connecticut, dated February 4, 2015. The plans were evaluated for fire apparatus, emergency services access, and the ability to conduct fire suppression activities. The site is accessed from Gulf Street via an asphalt entrance drive. The planned travel width of the entrance drive is 28 feet. A fire hydrant requested by the Milford Fire Marshal will be installed on Gulf Street to service this complex. The site consists of 32,796 square foot lot, planned or five three-story townhouse style residential buildings with three single family units each. Plans indicate the units would consist of a garage, living space, one bedroom with a study slash loft. Each unit will be separated by a two hour fire rated assembly to be constructed from the floor slab to the underside of the roof deck. In addition, per the request of the Milford Fire Marshal, the owners have agreed to install a fire sprinkler system in accordance with NFPA 13D. The plans provide adequate and appropriate site access from Gulf Street, i.e. the curb cuts, turning radiuses, for emergency service vehicles, fire engines, ambulances, and rescue vehicles. The most remote building is located approximately 230 feet in from Gulf Street, which poses no undue hardship to set up and conduct fire fighting operations. Adequate spaces provided around the perimeter of the units to deploy ground ladders for firefighting operations. In conclusion, site access, driveway widths, and water supplies are adequate for emergency service requirements. The construction type in concert with the fire sprinkler system should provide for control of any fire within a unit to the fire incipient stage and contain well within that unit only. In my opinion, this project poses no risk to public health and safety or any undue hardship related to emergency services. Respectfully submitted, Lee S. Cook, retired Milford Fire Marshal. Mr. Chairman, I just want to tie a few things up at the end here. I handed out to all of you at the uh, outset of our presentation to you a handout. Uh, included in that was the compliance plan that's required under Section 830G of our statutes, laying out for you the, uh, the details of the development, the way that these units, these five affordable uh, units would be marketed. I did put a yellow tag at the uh, probably the most important section of it where we do the calculation showing the <clears throat> uh, 
uh, monthly rent for the units for those individuals whose uh, family earnings are less than 80 percent of uh, the statewide or local median. And then also uh, for the other two units, the, there would be three units meeting the 80 percent level and two units meeting the 60 percent level. So, uh, you know, again, the same argument that we've made on other applications, because of the high per capita income here in Milford, the uh, difference between the affordable rent and the market rent is uh, basically negligible, but the incomes that are uh, qualifying for these units, the uh, uh, 80 percent level income of 51,840 and at the 60 percent level of 38,880 are designed to provide uh, good housing in the downtown area for those individuals at those income levels and we've seen in the other projects that have been approved you know most recently uh, 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 the project at 229 West Main Street that is now fully leased uh, uh, the people that are coming in there are young professionals uh, they're adding a lot to the vitality of the downtown, and uh, we believe that this project would be similar in vain to, uh, to that. And again, back in November of 2013, when I represented uh, Buddy and Chris Field with their application before you, we stressed the fact that, uh, again, downtown, walking distance to the train, the fact that it's a published and uh, 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 certified goal of uh, Milford in seeking uh, inclusion zone funding from the state of Connecticut to uh, uh, encourage these kinds of development in the downtown area really are in compliant with our plan of development. In the last two pages of the handout that I gave to you, I actually uh, copied pages 69 and 70 from the 2002 Comprehensive Plan and Development. On page 69, I highlighted the section, and I just want to read it into the record, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, for future housing projections due to the lack of developable land, there will uh, uh, be increased pressure for infill development and more intensive development on developed properties with less development constraints. With limited land left for traditional single family home development, the only areas available for expansion without changing zones will be in the corridor zones that allow for residential development under specific conditions and within the Milford Center. Both areas have easy access <clears throat> to mass transit, shopping, and other services. Development of high, higher density housing will require greater architectural standards, greater pedestrian and bicycle friendly infrastructure, site development that is both green and provides real outdoor amenities, usable, accessible green roofs, and where located within walking distance to the train station, less on-site parking. And flipping to the next page, I've highlighted the specific goal that multifamily uses should be specifically targeted for mixed use commercial zones along Route 1 and within the downtown MCDD zone or the SFA and the RMF zones. This application meets those goals. I think it's reasonable. I think it's in conformity what we've been trying to do downtown in Milford uh, over the last 10, 15 years, and I'd ask that you approve this application. Thank you. Any comments from staff? No, you, you have my report. Uh, I can't disagree with anything uh, Mr. Lynch said. Uh, the location is uh, what we uh, look for in our plan of conservation development. Uh, it's near amenities for people who uh, would uh, live there. Uh, it's near transportation, making it easy for uh, people to get to the train station in uh, downtown uh, just by walking if they so choose. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Mr. Quish. Um, so you say these are one-bedroom apartments. Yes. Um, there's two rooms on the second floor. Correct. Do you envision a, a restriction that the, the, the use be limited to one bedroom? Or do you feel that just whoever rents the apartment can use it as a two-bedroom just as easily as not? Typically, when these are designed to be two bedrooms, you put a second closet in. Uh, as you saw on the floor plans, they're designed to be a study or a den. So to answer your question, they are designed to be one-bedroom uh, uh, apartments. But then there will be no restriction, but if they, somebody wanted to build a closet later or put a well, put especially an armoire, when, they could really legitimately use these, every one of these units as a two-bedroom. 
Certainly under the, afford, the five affordable, the rent has to be based upon the one, bed, the one bedroom rate, okay? Uh, this board can see fit to make restrictions on any approval that you want. And uh, if it's a matter of uh, uh, having periodic checks from the building department uh, uh, to ensure that that's not the case, I leave it to you to, you were very artful with your uh, uh, coming up with uh, restrictions on the last application, so perhaps you can do just as good a job on this. Ms. Servine. Yeah, I, ha I have a couple of questions. I'll start with um, my questions about uh, fencing. It says here in the site plan, barbed wire fence. That may be an existing fence, Jane. There's a proposed fence. Not bad, but not barbed wire. It lent an interesting image to see barbed wire on top of a fence. And There's some existing barbed wire fence yeah. between our property and shop right. There's a proposed stockade fence being run along the uh, southerly border between us and the neighboring residents. This is, it's a somewhat dilapidated, but it's still there. But there will be no barbed wire. We're not proposing any <laughs> barbed wire fence. And then no. with the fence along with the northern side there, where you have the Arbor of Ida, will there, there will be a fence there, or will that be No, out? we're not proposing a fence along here, and we've, um, the suggestion was that we use some architectural facade of the building for a, a more aesthetic view from Cherry Street. Is there quite a drop there? I, I can't remember exactly what I the, saw. This is relatively close to grade. This is a retaining wall for the medical office building. It's probably about a five, six foot drop from this, re from this retaining wall down to the bottom. I, I can look, we do have heights on that wall. The wall is about 32, about seven feet tall. The retaining, the existing retaining wall between the office building and this is, again, their property. The dark is our property line. That retaining wall is seven feet tall. The applicant. Drop of seven feet at that point? Yeah, th this, again, this retaining wall that I'm pointing to here on the southerly side of this medical office building is on the property of the medical office building. That retaining wall is about 10 feet from our property line, and then our buildings are 10 feet. I'm just concerned about a safety issue there in terms of. Uh, I've got a little nudge from the applicant saying they'd be happy to put a fence. Um, that actually is on the neighbor's property, but we could put a fence along our property line. If you have more, you can keep going. Uh, keep going then. Um, we know that Gulf Street is a very, uh, it's a very uh, used street in, in Milford. And I was trying to envision the um, streetscape along Gulf Street. And I, I was questioning why there wasn't another tree or two there on Gulf Street. You know, that looks like there's room for it. And I wondered why there wouldn't be a tree or if you'd be open to putting a tree into, into uh, that space it looks we like do, about we do have 10 by 10 it looks like we do have two proposed street trees I know, one I see proposed that. one existing I'm, there, I'm is, wondering if there is overhead power lines along this street so we could put some small shrubs along this well that was my other suggestion or thought I see you have azalea uh, some part of part of the property there and if you might uh, just improve the streetscape by putting azaleas or trees in that area no that's all right is that right yeah, we could. Yeah, well. Behind the sidewalk and in between the, the front of this building and this parking spot, we could add some. 
Just a matter of making it shrubs. more yeah. appealing. When you get the side of the building, you know, facing the street, it's not very aesthetically appealing. And any kind of landscaping or trees would improve that, I would think. That side of the building will have that stone veneer. I know, I saw that, yeah. Well, I'll keep going here. Nobody else has questions. Uh, uh, the um, exterior will be all the same color, all the buildings? Yes. Um, Did you ask that question with 229 Main, West Main Street in mind? Or? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll just keep on this roll here then if you'll stay with me. I see there's quite an open area there. It looks like it's about 36 or 37 feet by 37 feet. It's up there in the northeastern see that the angle up there it's just a wide open space yeah and i was wondering if you had given any consideration to putting something in there I don't, I don't know, a gazebo or something recreational for adults or even children or just something that would make that uh, a usable space for the you know the people that are are living there like a little a picnic table picnic tables it's a thought. Yeah, I think. Greg Field gets credit for that. I think that's all for now. Mr. Dolan? I have a question for Mr. Sulkis. Is it all right if I ask it right now, or do we need to wait till everybody? All right. Mr. Sulkis, you've probably seen more of these 830G applications than anybody in the room. Um, if this application is denied, and they bring a law and the developers bring a lawsuit. In your opinion, as it's presented now, do you think that their lawsuit would prevail and the board would be overturned? You have to remember that uh, it's up to the board to demonstrate that there is some overriding uh, danger to the health, safety, and welfare of the community uh, that overrides the need for affordable housing. Um, I haven't heard anything this evening that would lead me to believe that. So, so at the moment, uh, between not hearing that and uh, using our own plan of conservation and development, which basically calls for this type of housing in that area, I think it would be uh, very difficult at the moment to uh, say that uh, we would have uh, a chance at all to um, win an appeal of this based on what has been uh, uh, brought out this evening. Okay, thank you. Any further questions from the board? Mr. Moore? I just have one question in regards to, um, is anyone here to speak in regards to handicap accessibilities or any features for any other properties? There's none provided on site. And based on the size of this project, there's none required. Thank you. Mr. Grant. I just one question on the uh, traffic study. Pardon me? On the traffic study? Yeah. Uh, right now, basically, uh, I've seen many times when somebody wants coming up Cherry Street, turning onto golf, and if they want to turn into that site, right now, like if anybody wants to turn into the bank or into the uh, church, uh, the traffic just backs right up through the intersection. Sure. Uh, I didn't know if in your traffic studies did you take and figure up on the stacking of what would happen when somebody wants to turn into this site? Well, I'll turn that over to David, but let me give you my reaction to that. And I, I say this as somebody who's lived my entire life in Milford, and I've attended St. Mary's Church my entire life. And what David had said about uh, traffic on Gulf Street as it approaches uh, Cherry Street with courteous drivers allowing people to cross and go. That's exactly what's, what happens at St. Mary's Church every Sunday after Mass. When you come out of the north, 
when you when you come out of when you come out of the north exit of the property, and if you want to take a right hand turn onto Gulf Street to head towards Cherry, the traffic alternates. And if you have here we're talking about 15 cars, 15 residents, say, maybe a little bit more. But on this site, and as David gave you in his presentation, and he can go into a little bit more detail about it, clearly that number of cars on site can dissipate through A, great sight lines, and B, the existence of a traffic signal right there, some 50 feet down from the site. And from any traffic engineer's point of view, you can't ask for a more, a more ideal situation as that. Because the traffic signals dissipate the traffic in an orderly fashion. You have excellent sight lines. You don't have a hairpin curve or traffic coming around a curve where people coming out of the site can't see the traffic coming. So quite honestly, that does occur. And it occurs on a regular basis. And I'm using the example of St. Mary's Church as an, as an example of that. When you're exiting that right-hand side exit, you go, then the next car on Gulf Street goes. You go, then the next car waves you through. And that's exactly what happens. And in any area downtown, and Gene will remember this when we were in 2006 uh, presenting the uh, Prospect Street application. All the talk during that uh, application, or the majority of the talk, was the traffic on Prospect Street, backing up. But that's what happens when you have a vibrant downtown. I mean, go up to Newport. You go to Newport in the summertime, you're sitting in traffic. That's not a safety issue. It's really not a safety issue, and courts don't recognize that as a safety issue. And I want to make that extremely clear on this application and on any other application that you're considering under 830G. Increase of traffic is not a safety issue, and it hasn't been recognized by courts as a safety issue. So with all that said, there are periods of time on uh, Gulf Street where, yeah, the, ba the traffic backs up from that traffic light. And maybe you have to sit there for one or two cycles to go through the traffic. But that's part of a downtown area that gets cr uh, crowded at certain times. When I leave my office on uh, Cherry Street, 63 Cherry, right in the middle of the block, the traffic is coming on both directions on Cherry Street. Sometimes it takes a minute to sit there and wait to pull out because it happens to be a busy time. Well, I wasn't saying it's a safety hazard. Right. I just was wondering. Okay. I'm just saying it's not a safety hazard. The frequency of people turning there is going to increase the amount of times that. I'll let David you know, jump back in. Be but I think up in that intersection. Right. His numbers during the peak were. Again, you can repeat them, but they were rather de minimis in terms of the overall flow of traffic during those, uh, those peak hours. Uh, just quickly to answer your question, we did look at the queuing in the traffic study. That was the last section of my report. And uh, we, the, the capacity analysis includes a queuing analysis. And the queues, the 95th percentile queues, which is 95 out of 100 queues, is, is three to four hundred feet from Cherry Street going south onto Gulf Street. The, the site drive is about 200 feet south of, of the stop bar. So what, what happens is during the peak hours, the worst queues will back past the site. The average queue was around 200 feet, which puts it right about at the site drive. So on average, the queues are coming back to the site drive. During the longer queues, it's going past the site drive. But in any case, when the signal turns green, they get a northbound advance, and then they get a north-south phase. So two out of three phases are northbound for Gulf Street. So that allows the queue to dissipate. And at that time, the traffic is, is free-flowing in and out of the site. During the off-peak hours, the queues don't get back to the site drive. During the off-peak, you, you have full access at the site drive all the time. During the peak hours, you're going to have periodic blockages. If you're coming southbound on Gulf Street, typically a driver will let you in. If not, you will get in when the light turns green. The traffic will clear out northbound, and you'll be able to make the left turn into the site. But the left turn into the site is a very high level of service. There, there's, 
according to the the queuing model and the capacity model, the left turn into the site is not an issue. The only issue is the traffic coming out of the site and exiting onto Gulf Street. Thank you. Thank you. Any further questions from the board? Seeing none, we will open this up for public comment. Does the applicant Ron have? has one more comment? Uh, excuse me. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate the question about handicap. Buildings of three units or less are not required to be handicapped accessible. Um, I did quickly look at the site plan and I see that I have not indicated a, a handicapped parking spaces for visitors, so I would alter one of these spaces to become a handicapped parking space. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now open this up for public comment. Here's the procedure. If you could please approach the podium clearly state your name and address and please spell your name for the record address all comments to the commission you don't need to talk to the applicant or their experts if you have um, if your comments have been previously presented please refrain from repeating simply say you agree with what was said before you state your comments in a clear and succinct manner and keep your comments to under three minutes if anyone is in favor of the application they could please approach the podium if you're in favor of the application. Hi, for the record, Melissa Martyr. Just please spell your name for the record. M-E-L-I-S-S-A, last name's Martyr, M-A-R-T-E-R. And your address, please. 105 Canary Place, Stratford, Connecticut. In your comments? I own a business um, right down the block on Gulf Street, on 100 Gulf Street, and I'm there seven days a week. So I think the proposed building is a great idea. It's currently an eyesore. There's not much else you can put there. Um, there's going to be a sidewalk put in, which I think increases the safety, because there's constantly people walking in the street, which I think is a danger. The property values will go up. Um, it will increase consumers to the area, which is what we need because stores are struggling, especially in the downtown area. It's affordable housing, which is what we need. There's plenty of parking being provided for the residents. I don't think that you'll find that there's any danger to, to the health or safety of the neighborhood based on the plans. Um, and I do agree with what they said, that traffic does alternate. I'm there seven days a week, and when St. Mary's is traffic with school and everything every single car alternates car by car so this building is not going to bring any more traffic than st mary's already does which people are courteous and they do wait and i'm one of those people it's every other car and you wait it's, it's what it is it's downtown um and that's all i have to say for it thank you if anyone else is in favor of the application please come forward Hi, William McNeil. I have the building at 3 Golf Street. Last name is McNeil, M-C-N-E-I-L. I've been there for 20 years, Business is Assurance Associates. Um, I think you can tell by the presentation that they've put together here, the project has been very well thought out. Um, I am concerned with the traffic there. However, I don't think this is gonna have an impact on it. I have waited there upwards of 15 minutes to get out of my parking lot. I think the fact that the traffic may slow down a little bit is going to actually help my business as far as I'm concerned, as far as the the volume and the speed of traffic that goes by. Um, I think it's gonna increase the value of the properties. And I think that uh, they've done a very good job in the presentation and I'm confident that they're going to put together uh, a project that I think is gonna increase the values of the properties and I'm in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in favor of the application? Seeing no one else, if you're opposed to the application, you could approach the podium. Uh, Teresa Sirico, S-I-R-I-C-O, been a real estate broker 40 years, so I'm familiar with the pro proposal of what they do there. First is uh, 48 and, and, Field um, Court. I'm sorry, and, uh, please state your address. 48 Field Court, Bayview. I go by there a couple times a day at least. First is I, I really would like to meet these courteous drivers because I've never met them. Um, the, the talk about a sidewalk is a moot point because there are no sidewalks there. It would only be right directly in front of that one piece of property. I do consider that to be the area to be a safety issue. 
it's a bad, very bad corner there. The, the cars are always lined up. Um, and in deference to this traffic study they did, this was done at a time when the beach isn't open. It's at a time when most of those office spaces across the street are still vacant. Uh, where ShopRite is going across the street, there'll be something else be going in there. So you're going to be having a, a, an increase in traffic. With 15 units, you could easily have two cars per unit. Um, I'm not going to comment on the fact about that other room that might be a bedroom or whatever it is, because you know, and I know, the building department is not going to be going in there. People are going to be having visitors going in and out. The, it is a danger because of the church and the school right down the street there, and there's always school buses all lined up. Um, in addition to that, I'd like to say the one thing that no one brought up tonight, the residential property directly across the street, the people who live there, with all those headlights fly, coming into their home, they're never going to be afraid of the dark. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else opposed to the application? I'm Diane Gendro. I live at 15 Gulf Street, directly across the street. My spelling in my last name is G-E-N-D-R-E-A-U, first name Diane. Um, I'm opposed to this, as Teresa Sirico had mentioned. The sidewalk that would be in front of this location would be in just that area. The next house, which is um, a rental unit, there's no sidewalk there, nor are there any sidewalks in front of any of those houses on that side of the street. My side of the street, there is sidewalk that goes all the way down, so the sidewalk is a moot point. I'm concerned about lighting issues. I'm concerned about the increased traffic for this theory of any of the traffic that's lined up at the traffic light there. While they're there idling, all of their fumes are coming into my front door because I don't have central air. So in the summertime, my windows are open. I also need to have my windows open during the summertime if I don't have any air conditioning in my bedrooms. So as a result, I'm going to be having all the lights coming in. I'm worried about light pollution coming in. I'm opposed to this. I do think that it would be nice to have something better to look at. You're also discussing the trees. They have taken down every single beautiful tree that was on Doc Rangel's property. It now looks like a barren light wasteland, except for one tree that's like a stick and it's got no limbs left on it. So I am opposed to this and I thank you for your time. Can you just state your address again? The board clerk didn't pick it up. 15 Gulf Street, directly across the street. Thank you. Anyone else opposed to the application? Hi, Solomon Norris, 44 Golf, N-O-R-R-I-S. I've been on Golf Street since 2002. I know, you know, they're trying to disclaim anything about, has to do anything with traffic. Well, first of all, the street is very narrow. I have a hard time pulling out of my driveway and staying in my lane. So if you guys were to allow another car to go onto that road, you know, 15 more cars pulling it out, which was most likely going to be doubled, because like you said, everyone's got their own car these days. I just don't see it being a safe situation. I've almost been hit a few times. I know they're saying traffic can't be considered, but with the amount of volume there, one car stopping in front of my house blocks up all the traffic on the Cherry Street. Nobody can actually come or go. You're just stuck there sitting at the light waiting to get by. Uh, there's plenty more, but that's all I can go, go with right now. Thank you. Anyone else against the application? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm Paul Abel at uh, 34 Gulf Street, and the spelling on my last name is A-B-E-L. I definitely uh, do not believe the uh, traffic engineer. I have seen the uh, traffic trying to get out of my driveway, and it is horrendous. And also the traffic trying to get into my driveway when I come from Cherry Street. And that is also terrible. And they have, uh, and the idea of courteous drivers is uh, out there. 
You know, they, they, they just stack up bumper to bumper, and I have sat in my driveway often for minutes just waiting for the traffic to clear to get out. And this is especially whenever anything is going on at uh, St. Mary's, either the school or the church. And I am also, the other concern I have is uh, do we, you know, do we need additional condos in uh, Milford? That's it. That's another. That's another question. And I also want to uh, tell them that they have cut down all the trees that were on the property, so none of them exist anymore. Except there's one that's standing that has had all the limbs taken off of it, and I think they're going to cut it down very soon. So anything about their landscaping had better be uh, good. <laughs> Thank you very much, sirs. Thank you. Anyone else opposed to the application? My name is Dr. Antonini, A-N-T-O-N-I-N-I. -N -I -N -I. I live in 50 Gulf Street in front of um, St. Mary's and uh, the cemetery. I'm opposed to the project um, in regards to the number of units that are going to be built and regarding the number of cars that are going to enter and leave the property. I think they create a safety issue. And if you want to check it, the only thing you have to do is not necessarily to, in, besides uh, considering the statistics that were mentioned before, you simply have to drive in front of the cemetery and see how the fence is broken and damaged in various places. And that is more than three op, um, occurrences in the last three years. Um, I moved to this city because of what it looked 15 years ago. And now there is many more people, much more traffic, and considering what, what is happening, I wouldn't move to Milford again. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else opposed to the application? My name is Wayne Gendro. I live at 15 Gulf Street. The last name is G-E-N-D-R-E-A-U. I live directly across the street from this proposal. My biggest concern is traffic. Um, I listened to the study. I'm not a traffic expert, but I have 35 plus years there. I can tell you this, I can count on one hand the number of times that people came out of church and let me out of my driveway in 35 years. I think Gulf Street is a, a traffic disaster. I think it has been, and this is the reason I'm opposed to this. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else opposed to the application? Seeing no one else, the applicant has a chance for rebuttal if they'd like to use it. Mr. Chairman, we really have nothing to rebut. Uh, we stand by the comments that we made to you. We recognize that uh, Gulf Street is in the downtown section and it does carry a lot of traffic, but I think that the uh, proposal before you does not appreciably add to that, doesn't create a public safety issue, and uh, I'd ask again that you consider the full merits of the application, consider the fact that uh, this is in compliant with our plan of conservation and development, uh, and it's been filed under the uh, parameters of Section 830G in addition to that, so that uh, I'm, I'm really making two arguments. I'm making the argument that the zoning regulations are not relevant, but on the other hand, I'm saying that in this particular application, it's unique because uh, the, applica the application does lend itself to uh, what our plan of development calls for. Thank you. Thank you. Anything from the board before we close the record? Ms. Servine? I have one more question. I'm back to trees. Um, I, I saw a note by the Tree Commission that they wanted that uh, 
was a crab apple tree replaced by a narrow tree. Uh, they called it Armstrong. I'm not familiar with that, but I wondered again if you might be able to place a similar tree so you'd have two in that spot I was pointing out before. Um, well, you've got that. Yeah, I, I would be happy to meet with the tree commission and uh, adjust the plans for their recommendations as well as add the flowering shrubs that you talked about. In, uh, and, and the possibility of a, of a tree, a tall, that same tree in that corner as well. Yes. Oh, they're, they're willing to. That's great. Yeah. Yes, Good. we are. Thank you. <laughs> Anything further from the board? Seeing none, public comments closed. The record is closed, and we will take this up at the next meeting for a vote. Thank you. And if you're, if you're leaving, we have one more item on the agenda, but if you're leaving, could you please exit quietly so we can continue our business? The next item on the agenda is 137 Milford Point Road, Zone R-5. All set, yes. All right, thanks. Again, Mr. Chairman, for the record, Thomas Lynch. Now, on this application, I'm here tonight with my client, Christine Timko, who's seated in the front row along with uh, her architect, Paul Holub. And I'm going to turn things over to Paul because he's going to uh, tell you briefly. I know the hour is getting late. It's been reviewed by staff. All the departments have uh, reviewed the plans. And uh, there is a favorable report from Steve Harris in the, uh, in the file. But just a little bit of background, the property at 137 Milford Point Road, uh, Mrs. Timko's house sustained damage during the combination of the two uh, hurricanes, Sandy and Irene, between 2010 and 2012. And to be honest with you, we've been working on this for the last almost two years. Uh, originally, we had applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals to allow for a complete raising of the shorefront house, elevation, and build a larger house. Uh, that application was denied. So she reworked her plans with Mr. Holub. Uh, the uh, uh, end result is what's being presented to you tonight. And uh, basically, uh, there's two residences on this property. There's a cottage on the street side and then her <clears throat> main house on the water side. It's not subject to special permit review because of the fact that it doesn't fall within the, the jurisdictional uh, lineage of the uh, high tide line. So we're before you with a site plan review. Uh, the plans call for the house to be raised, for an addition to be placed uh, over the back porch. Uh, the uh, uh, elevations of the house will be to the, uh, the appropriate uh, elevations for that zone. Uh, I think it's AE or VE? It's in the VE zone, so the appropriate elevation is noted on the plans. And, uh, that's it. So I'm going to turn things over to Paul, let him tell you the details of the uh, construction, uh, but this is the end result of almost two years of working to try to get this poor lady a refurbished house. So, Paul. Uh, good evening. My name is Paul Holub. That's H-O-L-U-B. I live at 191. Country Club Drive in Oxford. Um, I was hired to rework the plans to reconstruct, repair the existing house. It's below the floodplain now. It's a 10, elevation 10. We're going to raise it up to elevation 16, which is two feet above the floodplain to comply with all structural building codes that we need to do. The house is going to be in the exact same footprint 
of the old house minus several uh, sections. The areas that we're reducing is along this section of the property because it was too close to the existing um, uh, wall and we uh, with the raising up we've got a, a very nice view of the sound and we wanted to take advantage with windows so um, according to building codes we needed to take off some of it so basically we're reducing the footprint of the existing residence by about 40, 50 square feet. Uh, this is a, a view from the sound. Um, tried to keep the house within a certain character that's in the area. Uh, we'll be using vinyl clabbered siding. The um, areas that we're adding is over the first floor, this exists. We're going to be adding a proposed section here, which would be in this area. Um, over the sound, we're enclosing a covered porch, open porch, and putting a master bedroom up on top. Um, again, once we raise it up, we're going to have to check all the uh, foundation, make sure everything is up to code, and for safety's sake. Thank you. Any comments from staff? Not at this time. Any questions from the board? Mr. Nickel. Yes, I have a few questions. Um, is there going to be a sprinkler system in this uh, renovation? Not at this point, no. Not at this point? No. No, we do not intend to. Uh, Are you going to rebuild the seawall that's uh, falling apart? Uh, that's something the contractor is going to have to look into. We uh, had at this point no intention of doing that. If that's uh, a requirement, we'll certainly look into that. Any further questions from the board? Seeing none, would anyone like to make a motion? Mr. Quish. I, I would make a motion to approve as submitted. A second. Having a motion is second by Mr. Grant. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all in favor? Anyone against? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is liaison report. Anyone with the report? Seeing none, the next item on the agenda is regulation subcommittee. Mr. Grant? Uh, no report as tonight. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. I have some corrections. Um, Sure, there, there are some corrections. I have two. Want us to vote on it next meeting? Or you want to give them? I do them. In <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to know two corrections to last, um, last meeting's minutes. Uh, one is that I gave the incorrect date for the next meeting, uh, which is tonight. It's April 7th. I said it was April 6th. And um, the East Broadway CAM application was actually a two-family. Those are the two uh, corrections I'll make on the on noted tonight. Okay. I don't, I don't think anyone heard you. Your microphone's now yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. The microphone wasn't on, so. I've never spoken with the microphone. Okay. <clears throat> I gave the incorrect information that the meeting that is held tonight I noted as being held on April 6th, when in fact it's April 7th, as we know. Um, and also in the East Broadway CAM application, it was stated that it was a single family residence that was being built, when in actuality it was a two family residence, as the architect stated. And I will note those two corrections in the minutes for tonight with your approval. Thank you. With those two corrections, would anyone like to make a motion? Ms. Serene? 
Motion to approve, I will second. Any discussion, seeing none, all in favor? Anyone against, motion passes. Um, the next item on the agenda is the chairman report. I have no report. The next item on the agenda is staff report. Any report? No, there's a UConn game that we want to get home to see. Um, Ms. Servine, although she'd like to see it, has a quick question. Help us quick. I'm just concerned about uh, the process again for our CAM reports, and I'm assuming that the one we got tonight uh, met all of the regulations, the site plan review, and, and I guess I'm talking to you, Mr. Griffith, that if there's any changes regarding that, you'll apprise us of those as they happen. Thank you. All right. Anyone else? Seeing no one else, um, motion to adjourn. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you.